Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Uh, in a recent video, I showed how I made this motor clamp. This is the motor clamp for the tool post grinder. And as you can see, there are no parallel sides on this. So to mill this part, I clamped the raw stock in the low profile talon, talon grip jaws and milled one side of it and then flipped it over and held it in soft jaws. And I got a question on that video about how I set up the cam to mill the soft jaws. And I figured I'd go ahead and do a video and show how I did that. Now there may be better ways to do it than what I'm gonna show here, but I'm just gonna show how I did it. If you know a better way to do it, or if there's a plug-in for Fusion or something to make this easy, go ahead and put that down in the comments and we'll all benefit from it. But for now, I'm just gonna show how I did it. Now, when I set up cam for milling things in the vise, I very rarely just move to the cam workspace in the design for the part itself. I usually create a new design and then I can bring in a model of my vise, I can bring in models of the jaws, bring in models of the parallels, and actually set the whole, the whole assembly up the way it's gonna be in the mill. It's not strictly needed, but then it allows me to tell Fusion which parts are the part being milled and which parts are the fixture, and it can detect collisions between the tool and the fixture. So that's how I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Let me just create a new design. Now before I can bring anything in, you have to save the design. Call this cam sample. Okay, now I'm gonna start with the soft jaws and I actually have my soft jaws modeled. This is just a solid the same size as the jaw and this actually has the holes in it because this is the model I used when I made the soft jaws. Uh, there'll be a link to that video down below. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ground this just so this back jaw will be my anchor point for the whole model and things won't move around on me. I actually need two of these, so I'm gonna hit Control C and Control V to create a second one. And I'll move it out here and flip it around so that it faces in just the way it'll be in the vise. Now I need to control the distance between these. I don't know exactly what distance I want them to be but I'm gonna go ahead and set up a joint between them. Assemble, joint, and I'm gonna pick a point in the center there, and I'm gonna match that to this point here. Now, that puts them touching each other. They're not gonna to be touching each other, so I wanna offset it. So I'll pull this out. I don't know how far apart they're gonna to need to be, um, so I'm just gonna say one inch. And now we have the jaws. Now, these jaws are actually links to external components. So I can't machine these or modify these in Fusion. Uh, there may be a way to do it, but what I usually do is I will actually create a new model in here, a new solid that I'm gonna use to actually mill. So I can just select the top of this, say extrude, and I can just extrude distance to the bottom edge, new component, and now I've got this new component that is that back jaw face, or is that is the same size as that back jaw. I'll do exactly the same thing here. Extrude, distance to the bottom, new component. Okay, so now I have the back jaw, and I have my front jaw. And I'll go ahead and just turn off, for now, the soft jaws that I imported, and we've just got this front jaw and back jaw solid. Now let's bring in the motor clamp and position it where it's gonna need to be to mill it. So I've got the motor clamp in here. Let me kind of rotate this so at least it's in the right orientation. Oh, I guess I already have it there. Let's see. Like that. And that's at least the right orientation, so that'll make things easy to visualize. Now what I want to do is position this so that it's sitting on top of the jaws, centered, but sunk in about a quarter of an inch. And the easiest way to position this so it's centered is to create a joint origin between two faces. I'll select between two faces here and put a joint origin between the faces of these jaws. And the snap point I'll pick here is the top center. Okay, so I've got a joint origin right there in the middle, and I want to take the middle of this part and join it to the middle, to join it to that new joint origin, which will then position it on top here. So I'll say assemble, joint, 
Now I could just pick one of these points that's about in the center, but I want to actually put it between those two faces on that slot so it'll be centered. So I'll right click, say between two faces, and select those two faces, and then select snap to this bottom corner. So now I've got a joint origin there. For the second joint origin, I'll collect snap, excuse me, select there, and that will bring it down. Those screws will come down later. Uh, bring it down, and this has it sitting exactly centered on top of the jaws. I don't want it on top, I want it sunk in. So I'll grab this and pull it down minus 0.25, so a quarter of an inch. So now we've got it positioned, centered on top of those jaws. Now, the jaws are not far enough apart. I'm actually breaking through. I made them an inch apart. Let's go back to that joint here. I'll double click it. And instead of one inch, let's make that 1.25. Now they're further apart. And now you can see the parts entirely captured. I could try to spread them further so that there'd be more meat here. But if I do that, then I start to lose the kind of curve around this end that's really needed to keep the part from moving horizontally. So I think, I think that position is good. Now, I still don't have, I turn off the motor clamp, you can see the solid is still solid. It's not, it's not carved out yet. So I need to actually model the opening in the jaw. So what I'll do is I will just create a sketch on the top of the jaws, or I guess on the top of the jaw. Now you can see from the sketch, this is a dark brown color, and then over here, this is lighter. And you can also see that when I touch this surface, there's a black outline around it, and when I touch this one, there's not. This is uh, one of those things about Fusion 360. Even though these two surfaces are in line with one another, only the one on the part where I actually created the sketch is a part of the sketch. So this black border is a part of the sketch, and if I draw a line on here and split it, I still get a, a contour that I can use. Not so on this side, because this one is not included as a part of it. So I'm gonna hit P for project, and I'm gonna select that top surface, and you can see now it's added these purple lines, and so now this is a part of the sketch, and this surface is a part of the sketch. Now I'll hit P to project again, and I will just project the edges of my part. So the two curved ends and the two flat sides, okay. And I'll go ahead and stop the sketch. I'll turn off the motor clamp so you can see what I've got here. And I've got these two regions that I need to cut out now defined. So it's just a simple matter of click and control click to select both of those, right click, extrude. And then I can just extrude that downward and I can cut material out of the jaws. Now, I know I want this to go down a quarter of an inch, but I'm actually going to tie this together, so I'm indicating design intent, not literal value. So if I turn the motor clamp back on, instead of distance, I can say to object, and I can just pick one of these points on the bottom of the motor clamp. And now it's tied to the dimensions of the motor clamp, so it's there. And now if I turn off the clamp, you can see I have a pocket modeled in my vice jaw blanks to hold, the, to hold the motor clamp. Now, by doing it this way and tying this together, now I can go back and change these joints and say, oh, well maybe I want it instead of a quarter inch down, maybe I want it a half an inch down, and now the model follows that. So that's why I don't tend to put in actual dimensions, I actually tie it to the design intent. Minus 0.25, put that back, and there are our vice jaws. Okay, I'm just gonna save this. Now let's go over into CAM. And so now we actually have the model of the vice jaws that we want to mill. So I'll create a new setup for that. And for this setup, my model is gonna be these two vice jaws. And then for my stock, right now you can see it's trying to put one big block of stock around all of this, but that's not really what I have. Um, what I really have are these two soft jaw blanks. So I'll go in here and just turn those off, turn the original soft jaw models on, since that's what I'm starting with. And then for stock mode, I select from solid, and then I select those two solids. So now I have that selected as my stock. 
Now if I go back over to setup here, I want to set the origin. I will choose the body of the Z arrow, click on any surface on the top, so Z will be up, Y to the back, X to the right, that's what I want. And then for the origin, I'm going to put it on the back corner of this jaw. Okay, so now I have my setup. My setup knows what my, uh, what my stock is. I can actually turn those off again. And it knows what stock it's going to be milling. I can turn my models back on. And now we can mill them. So we want to do a 2D adaptive clearing. Select a 3 8 inch flat aluminum end mill. And then come in here and select these two pockets. Make sure I've got 20 thousandths radial stock to leave, so it'll, it'll leave 20 thousandths on the wall. And that's it. It'll model this out and generate a toolpath. Then I also need a 2D contour to finish this out. We'll use the same tool. Okay. And now it's got a contour on the end. Now let's go ahead and model this. Let's go ahead and simulate this. Now I'll turn this, I'll turn off the model here. So all we have is the stock. And if I run through the simulation, I now have a tool path that carves the material out of the jaws and then comes back and contours both sides. And that is the soft jaws. That's the cam to make them. So I'll go ahead and label that setup. Then to go ahead and create the cam in the same coordinate system to mill the other side of the clamp, I'll go ahead and turn the clamp back on and I will create a new setup the model for that will be the clamp. And then I can say I have a fixture, and the fixture is these two soft jaws. Now for the coordinate system, I can again select the Z, select the surface so that'll be up. And then for the origin, uh, I can select instead of a stock box point, I can say selected point. And that'll allow me to select this very same back corner that we used when we milled the soft jaws as my Z0, or X, Y, and Z0. So now if I go between these two setups, here's where I'm milling the soft jaws. You can see where the origin is. And when I switch over to the cam to mill the part, switch over to that setup, the origin's still in the same place, so I don't have to re-zero the machine. And now I can use this setup to bring in operations to mill the top side of the clamp. And that is really all there is to it. Now I can post out both of these programs and set my, put the soft jaw blanks in the mill and set my uh, origin to the top back corner of the, of the back jaw, just like you saw in the video milling the, the motor clamp. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.